Hey guys, well, two years ago, in February, I made a video called uh, Bearing Block Mind Blow. And a buddy of mine had decided to put a bearing in the bearing block for a fire bow. Okay? So, now I had made different ones. I, I even got a nice one I made out of antler. Unfortunately, I can't find it because I think my brother took off with it. But I've got some other ones. But I went to a hardware store. Actually, I went to a Lowe's. And I got one of these pieces of corium that you use for you check and see. They give these away for free. You take it and you put it on your counter to see if this is what the color you like, this is the texture you want. It's a free sample piece. It's about here big. Well, I broke the corners over on a piece of uh, sandpaper. Actually, I used a Dremel to start it off, and then I used a sanding block just to clean it up a little bit. So it fits the hand nice. Doesn't No sharp edges on it. The other thing I did was I drilled a hole in the center, not all the way through, but in the center, and I added a sealed ball bearing out of a pair of roller skates. Now, these sealed ball bearings are expensive. You can pay up to $14 for one, depending on the size you get, because they're used in, like, electric drills and things like that. And these sealed ball bearings can be very expensive, even if you order some online. If you go to the flea market or a bicycle shop, they use these sealed ball bearings in bicycle front wheels on less expensive bicycles. And then in roller skates, I got 16 of these ball bearings, two for each wheel, on a $2 pair of roller skates at the flea market. 16 ball bearings, that's a lot of bearing blocks. So how does it work? Well, works pretty darn good. But the, uh, all I had to do was drill the hole and then sink the bearing partway into the hole and epoxy it in. Make sure that you have a stick large enough to move the centerpiece of the bearing while it's drying because you don't want that centerpiece to become glued in there, okay? The centerpiece needs to move while the outer piece needs to stay attached to the bearing block. So now you could drill a hole in this and wear it around your neck. You could drill a hole in it and hang it on your pack or throw it in your fire kit or whatever you want to do. And the nice thing is the stick doesn't have to fit in the hole. The stick can just fit against the bearing because you can see the way that that sticks out on the edge by my thumb there, I hope. So now, why would you want to do this? Well, I've seen some of you guys on the Internet, on YouTube, you guys are making these things. You're building them out of uh, stainless steel. You're building them out of leather. You're putting them in watch bands. There's a million things to do. Uh, you know, this wonderful, great. You know, that's why I said... I don't want to make any money off of it. Everybody in the world can make one. It's simple enough to do. The bearing, a block, you stick it in there, epoxy it, good to go. You got woods and get a piece of tree, you drill a hole in it, stick that in there. But what does this do that using a regular bearing block doesn't do? Well, this reduces the friction at the top, which puts more friction at the bottom on your hearthboard where it's spinning to make your fire, to make your ember to build up your dust and, and create a glowing ember down there. With no friction at the top, you don't have to worry about putting a candle in there or grease in there or a couple of leaves in there or anything else like that. You make one, you carry it with you. You know, remember this. When you make a fire bow set, you don't make a new one every time you go out. They make a fire bow set that works really nice. You keep it. And you just make another hole when the first hole burns out. And you just keep adding on to it. And the Native Americans used to make a thing called a storyboard. So if they would go on a trip, they would take a piece of wood, and they would make markings the first day. Maybe they saw deer, and they left, and the people were joyous as they were going out. And they, would, they would draw all these little things on a storyboard. And then when they got to making a fire that night, or they did some kind of big fire thing, like they were going to have a big meetup with a bunch of other people and they had a fire, they would use that piece of wood and they would make a fire with that piece of wood and it would become part of the story. And they didn't throw that away. It went back and hung in their lodges and went back to their, to their places with them and they kept that because that was the story to pass down of something really neat that happened. You know, So they didn't always get rid of the fireboards and make a new one every time. But with this... The friction is all at the bottom. It also includes your speed. And, you know, as long as the wood rests against that bearing and that bearing spins, it doesn't have to go in there. 
It can just sit on top of it and spin. You don't have to make it fit perfect inside there. That's the nice part about it. So making one's very simple, very small, easy to carry. You always got it. One less thing you have to make when you're out there in the field. And it's fun to play with on top of everything else. All right. Well, I hope this gets you to be a little creative and it shows you how cheap you can make one. I mean, I could just went out here in the woods and grabbed a piece of wood and drilled a hole in it and stuck a bearing in there. That's all there is to it. That's it. All right. You guys have a good one. I'll catch you on the next one.